welcome to the show of biology. I am Roma Malik and I'll be teaching class 11th biology. In the last episode, we had been discussing regarding the unit diversity in the living world. The topic for today is the animal kingdom under the unit diversity in the living world. The word animal has been derived from the Latin word animalis, which means having breath. Animals are multicellular eukaryotic organisms. They are motile and sh they show a diverse form starting from the sponges to the insects to human beings and other animals. Now, what is the basis of classification? There are certain criteria, levels of organization. Some of the organisms, they show cellular level of organization for example, in porifera, some show tissue level of organization. Few other animals, they show organ level of organization and the highest evolved form, they show organ system level of organization. Circulatory system is the next important basis of classification. It may be the open type and the closed type. In the open type, the blood is pumped from the heart directly into the tissues and cells. In the closed type, which is found in higher animals, they have blood vessels and the blood is circulated all throughout the body. Symmetry is another basis of classification. They may be asymmetrical, radial or bilateral. Asymmetrical organisms cannot be divided into two equal halves. In case of radial symmetry, the organism can be divided into two equal halves if the plane passes through the central axis. In case of bilateral symmetry, which is found in case of annelida and arthropoda, the organism can be divided into two equal halves in any one plane. The next important criteria for classification is germinal layers. The germinal layers during the embryo development, the organism may develop two layers, which is known as diploblastic. The outer layer is known as ectoderm and the inner layer is known as endoderm. It may also be triploblastic. In triploblastic organisms, they have the outer ectoderm, the inner endoderm. In between the ectoderm and endoderm, they have the mesoderm. The next important criteria is body cavity. Organisms which have body cavity are referred to as celomates. Organisms which do not have a body cavity, they are acelomate. And in few organisms, there is a false body cavity which is referred to as pseudocelomate. Segmentation is another important criteria as found in annelids. In annelids, that is an earthworm, the body is segmented. This pattern of segmentation is known as metameric and the phenomena is known as metamerism. The presence of notochord is another important criteria. The notochord is mesodermally derived rod-like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development. Organisms which possess a notochord are referred to as chordates and organisms which do not have a notochord are referred to as non-chordates. Now let us have a quick look at the classification of kingdom animalia based on common fundamental features. We will now start with the non-chordates, phylum porifera. We will start with the phylum porifera. Porifera includes sponges. They are marine as well as asymmetrical animals. They have water canal system and their body has minute pores which is known as ostea. Digestion is intracellular and the body is supported by skeleton which is made up of spicules. They are hermaphrodite animals that is the male and female are found in the same individual. Asexual reproduction takes place by fragmentation and sexual reproduction is by the formation of gametes. 
phylum Cylinterata, which is also known as Nidaria. Hydra and jellyfish, they come under Nidaria. They are aquatic, marine, sessile, or free swimming, radially symmetrical organisms. Presence of stinging capsules are found. The organism is diploblastic, that is, they are made up of two layers, the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm. They have two basic body forms. The first is the polyp, which is found in hydra. They are sessile. The second is medusa, which is found in jellyfish, and they are free swimming. Digestion is extracellular as well as intracellular. Phylum Tinophora. Pleurobrachia is included in this. They are marine diploblastic animals with radial symmetry. They have the tissue level of organization and the locomotion is by comb plates. Digestion is extracellular as well as intracellular. They have the property of emitting light and this particular property is known as bioluminescence. Reproduction is by sexual means. The sexes are not separated and fertilization is external. Phylum Platyhelminthes. The organisms included under Platyhelminthes are tapeworm and liver fluke. They are dorsoventrally flattened, as we can see in flatworms, and they are also endoparasites. Few of them, they are found in the human body as well. They are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic organisms, that is, the presence of ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. They are arcelomate and have organ level of organization. They have flame cells which are meant for osmoregulation and excretion. They are hermaphrodite animals. The next phylum is Ascalmenthes, which includes the round worms and the filaria worms. Their body is circular in cross section. They are aquatic or free living, terrestrial or parasitic. They have the organ system level of organization. These organisms are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, pseudocilomate, and dioecious. Phylum Annelida, which includes earthworm and leech. They are aquatic or terrestrial organisms. They may be free living and sometimes parasites. They have organ system level of organization and exhibit bilateral symmetry. They are triploblastic, silomate, metamerically segmented, that is, their body is segmented and they have a closed circulatory system, presence of blood vessels. Nephridia are present in these organisms, which helps in osmoregulation and excretion. The next phylum is Arthropoda. This is the largest phylum in animal kingdom. We find different forms of these Arthropoda. All the insects, they come under Arthropoda. They have organ system level of organization. They are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic organisms, that is three germinal layers, segmented, silomate, presence of true body cavity. Their body is made up of chitinous exoskeleton. Now, what are the characteristics of chordates which distinguish them from non-chordates? Chordates have notochord. It is a dorsal hollow nerve cord. They also have paired pharyngeal gill slits and their body is bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic, silomate, and they have an organ system level of organization. Circulatory system is of closed type. All organisms under chordates have blood vessels, that is, they have arteries, veins, capillaries, etc. 
Chordata is divided into three subphyla. They are the Eurochordata, Cephalochordata, and Vertebrata. All the higher organisms, they come under Vertebrata. The characteristics which are exhibited by the Vertebrata are, their notochord is replaced by vertebral column. They have a ventral muscular heart, which may be two, three, or four chambered. Kidneys are present, which is meant for excretion and osmoregulation of the body. They have paired appendages, which are fins or limbs. They include seven classes. They are Cyclostomata, Chondrichthys, Ostichthys, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. We'll be dealing with the class Cyclostomata. Lamprey and hagfish comes under this. They have a elongated body and they have about 6 to 15 pair of gill slits. These organisms are jawless. The body is devoid of scales and paired fins. Cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous in these organisms. The circulation is of closed type. Chondrichthys. Dogfish and stingray, they come under chondrichthys. They are marine animals with a streamlined body and cartilaginous endoskeleton. The notochord is persistent throughout their life. The skin is made up of placoid scales and they have a very powerful jaw. The next class is Ostichthys, which includes the marine flying fish and the freshwater rohu. They have a bony endoskeleton and a streamlined body. Presence of air bladder, which helps in buoyancy. Heart in these animals are two-chambered and they are cold-blooded animals. Amphibia. They are found in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitat. Presence of two pairs of limbs. Their body is divided into head and trunk and the respiration is either by gills, skin or lungs. In amphibia, heart is three chambered and they are cold blooded animals. Reptilia. Reptilia includes crocodiles and lizards. Their locomotion is by crawling and the body is covered by scales. Heart is generally three chambered, but in crocodile it is four chambered. They are cold blooded animals. Aves. Aves includes the birds. Their characteristics are the presence of feathers in their body. They have a very prominent beak. Their forelimbs are modified into wings and their hind limbs are meant for walking, swimming or clasping. They have an endoskeleton which is bony with hollow air cavities. Their heart is four chambered and they are warm blooded animals. Mammalia. It includes kangaroo, dog, tiger and human beings. It has a variety of habitats. Presence of mammary gland is an important feature of mammalia. They have two pairs of limbs, which is meant for walking, running, climbing, burrowing, and swimming. Skin is covered by hairs, and they have external ears. Presence of jaw, and these jaws have different types of teeth. Respiration is carried out by lungs and the heart is four chambered. They are warm blooded animals. In this episode, we had been discussing regarding the chordates and we also saw how the chordates, they are different from the non chordates. The animal kingdom has different diverse forms. They have a wide variety of forms and basing on the classification pattern, which makes them unique. They have been classified 
based on certain criteria, their levels of organization, their circulatory system, their body symmetry, the presence of germinal layers, presence of body cavity, segmentation and notochord. Animals are multicellular organisms which show various diverse forms. We completed the chapter Animal Kingdom. In the next episode, we'll move on to the next unit and we'll be referring to the chapter Morphology in Flowering Plants. Thank you.